After a split with the Louisiana teams in Sunbelt action over the weekend, Georgia State getting ready for the annual trip down to Hanner Fieldhouse in Statesboro. Georgia State, Georgia Southern basketball Friday night in the borough. We're going to talk to head coach Ron Hunter, and we'll talk to Georgia State baseball coach Greg Frady about the season opener this week on the Georgia State Sports Update. Panther fans and welcome into the Georgia State Sports Update back for another week talking all things Panther athletics. We're going to talk baseball a little bit later on in the show as uh, head coach Greg Frady and the Panthers get set to open up the uh, 2018 college baseball season. But right now we're talking college basketball as we do each and every week. Head coach Ron Hunter with us in studio and uh, a win over Louisiana Lafayette on Thursday night. Big game. Uh, that was a much anticipated game. And then Louisiana Monroe uh, comes in here and beats us in overtime. So right now, 19 and 7, 10 and 3, solidly holding down second place in the Sunbelt Conference with five games to go and getting ready for your annual trip down to Statesboro. <laughs> yeah, this is a, uh, you know, every game's big for us at, at this point. Again, we, uh, uh, nothing really changed. We're still two games behind, or really a game and a half behind Lafayette. And uh, I thought we had great effort on Thursday and uh, to the point where I thought we, we played at such a high level. Uh, that we couldn't we couldn't match that on Saturday, and uh, we kind of had a trap game in between. And Monroe really got us, and they got Georgia Southern, the only school in the league that's won both on that trip. So uh, kudos to uh, to Monroe, but uh, uh, we let one kind of get away. Um, but uh, uh, all things considering, uh, I like where we stand right now. Uh, there's only going to be one team that's going to represent the Sun Belt in the NCAA tournament, uh, regardless of what happens the rest of the way. And so the uh, the tournament becomes huge for us. It is one of those things you want to take as much momentum into Lakefront Arena in New Orleans as you mm -hmm. possibly can. And if you just look at the uh, the way the two teams have played, you could very much sit here and say that by the time we get to that championship game, it's going to end up being Georgia State and Louisiana Lafayette. But a great game last Thursday night at the arena. Had a great crowd, really good atmosphere in the arena, and you scored 106 points. Yeah, you know, I, that's what I meant. We, it was, it was, we played at such a high level. Uh, offense. If you had told me that was going to be the score before the game, I would have said we, we would have lost the game. Yeah. Uh, because, again, we hadn't really played that way all year. But uh, even the way this game started, back and forth hitting threes. And so uh, two really good teams, the two best teams in the league. And, and I said it before, let's just let's let's stop playing right now. Let's send these two teams to let us play for who's going to go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, I'll give part of his check back. I'm keeping my check. So <laughs> we don't have to play these last few games. But, uh, uh, no, those are just uh, two high-quality teams. Really two teams that can go, do some damage in the NCAA tournament if you let both of these teams go in the NCAA tournament. Well, DeMarcus Simons ends up 9 of 19, 22 points, 9 rebounds, so he just misses a double-double. Another great game from your center, or we'll call him his center, your, your, your post player, <laughs> right. uh, Jordan Session, who's been playing fantastic down the stretch, 22 points, 6 rebounds, couple of blocks, and then you get a double-double out of Malik Benlevy, 13 points, 12 rebounds. You played 7 players, 6 of them scored in double digits. I haven't said this enough. The coaching this year has been un unbelievable. Incredible. I just think it's been great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, the, 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 these kids have been great, man. They, they really have. Uh, they're fun to coach. They're fun to be around. They're winners. Uh, again, they, you know, even after the loss Saturday, you know, these guys, they, they want to get right back at it and, and, and practice. And so, so it's been fun. I, I've enjoyed this year probably more than I have in the 20 plus years I've been a head coach. And so uh, just enjoying the group because they, they, they want to get better. They want to win. They, they, they really believe in each other. They coach themselves. Yep. We don't have to coach effort with this group. So again, the, when, when, when one has a bad game, the other one picks up. We just happen to have the Lafayette game where everyone scored a double figure. Everyone played great. And so rarely do you get that. But, uh, um, you know, I'm really proud of them. I really am. Because, again, you know, the, with the hype of all the Arlington coming in and what Lafayette did, everybody kind of forgets about Georgia State. We just kind of sit there and, bam, here we are. Well, that 2015 season wasn't a bad season. Yeah, yeah, they, they I mean, had... You little, played pretty well that year. Yeah, but we had a little skinny kid that, that, <laughs> that made a few shots, you know, and so he, he did some nice things for us. But, uh, you know, there, there was been a blessing here. We've had a lot of good seasons at Georgia State, yep. you know, and some, sometimes people forget that. You know, one of the things that we, we have a culture here winning, and I love that, and I love that's one of, when I first met you the first time. Yep. We talked about we wanted to build a culture of winning, an expectation of winning 20 games, expectation of fighting for a championship every single year, and that's what we've been able to do here, and I'm really proud of that, you know, with 
with my staff and the players, that's been unbelievable because it's hard to do at the mid-major level year in and year out. Real quick, another great accomplishment, Bryce Washington, a double-double machine, 10.6 rebounds. Yeah, we thought he was a key, and, and you know, we, he's been around this league a while, and so we thought we had to do a good job with him. The one time they beat us, we've had a lot of success with Lafayette, is when we let him kind of go, you know, inside and out, and so we had to do a great job, and, and we, our defense was focused on, focused on Bryce, and so I thought we did a really nice job with him. All right, we'll talk to Coach uh, coming up after we take a look at some of the highlights about the overtime loss to Louisiana Monroe. They had a great weekend trip through the state of Georgia. Right now, though, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the Georgia State Sports Arena. Back-to-back -back games against the Louisiana teams, the Ragin' Cajuns and the Warhawks. Arena, Georgia State splitting with the Louisianas and joined again by head basketball coach Ron Hunter. And uh, real quick, uh, just touching on Louisiana Monroe, kind of tells you a little bit about this Georgia State basketball team. Louisiana Monroe led this game at halftime 47-36. To get it to overtime, we outscored them in the second half alone 40-29. to And a lot of it was Demarcus Simons yeah. with help, but he scored a career-high 39 uh, in carrying that team into the overtime period on uh, Saturday of last week. Yeah, you know, we, di we didn't have a lot of guys show up for, for a lot of different reasons, but DeMarcus kind of carried us. And, and again, we lost the game early in the first half. And, yeah. and, you know, we just, and the mountain just got too big for us. But we still even had an opportunity to, to make a few free throws to win the game. But again, um, part of the process, and I've said this is my team from day one, there's a process of winning the championship. Sometimes you don't know why you go through some of the things. And, and so, uh, um, you know, I think that this, this will help us down, a, down the road in regards to just getting back to making sure we get focused. I thought after the Thursday night game, we spent, there was a lot of celebration and we were waiting for that moment and, and we didn't handle the next one. Where it's like we had, we, we played Lafayette and now it was a conference tournament that we still had to go play these rest of these games. And so I think part of that process, I think, has been a great learning experience for us. Well, like you said on the radio show, had that game been played maybe Saturday night, yeah. it would have made a world of difference. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Real quick just a, yeah, just a few hours, uh, you know, if we had played it in that evening or if we would have played them first on Thursday, right. you know, uh, I think you may have been in there. But again, I want to give Monroe credit. You know, they came, he, he had them ready to play. They won four out of five games yep. and uh, they're playing good basketball. Another one of those teams you'd be a little nervous about if you had to play play them uh, in that first or second game. I'm nervous game. about playing anybody. Man, if we were playing the Sisters <laughs> of the Poor right now and they just lined up, I'd be nervous. I'm just, when you're coaching, man, you don't, you never know what 18 and 19 year olds are going to do. Right. So, it doesn't matter. We, we could play, we could play your wife, five of her <laughs> friends, we can play it tonight and I'm going to be just as nervous if we're playing Duke right now. Uh, well, nah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. not. <laughs> Don't tell your wife I said that. <laughs> hey, hey, getting lost in uh, the 39 and 12, you had another player with a double double, 14 and 10 by Jordan Sessions. Yeah, I mean that's what I said earlier. I thought the entire group played well. I mean, you know, whether it was offensively, defensively, we we just were playing at a level. The guys were really locked in. You know, we were only playing about seven guys now, maybe eight, a little bit, but uh, those guys were extremely, extremely locked in. But it just can't be for that game. You know, yeah. what we got to be able to do is we got to be able to. Turn on, turn it off, get to the next one. And we've been doing a great job of that. We just didn't do it on Saturday. All right, real quick, Georgia Southern, Friday night, 9 yeah. o'clock Eastern time, 8.30 on the radio, if you're with us on the radio network. But uh, down at Hanner Fieldhouse, yeah. big showdown again. Well, you know, for us, every game we play, for the, these next five are all big showdowns. Yeah. They're, they're all big games because we're trying to catch a team that's in front of us. And, so, and we want to continue to play well. Uh, we know it would be a great crowd there. It's an it's a ESPN2 game. We, we understand that it's na with national exposure. Uh, but uh, for us right now, we got to get back to winning and we got to get back to playing well. We got to get back to carrying that defensive stick and being a great defensive team. All right.
great as always. Appreciate it. We'll see you back here next week. Come we'll on, Dave. See give you Friday me some, night I, I need some more minutes, man. More minutes. That's what you guys are radio. cutting me out. Come on, I need more minutes. Let's cut these other guys out. I know we got Sarah, but I want some more minutes. We're going to negotiate that next week. Let's do it. I get more minutes, right? All right. All right, let's go. All right, I want to thank Georgia State's head basketball coach, as always, Ron Hunter, with us here on the Georgia State Sports Update. Stay with us. Coming up next, we're talking college baseball with Panthers head coach Greg Frady. We're talking Georgia State baseball right now here on the Georgia State Sports Update. Dave Cohen joined by Georgia State's head baseball coach, Greg Frady. Great to have you in studio. And a lot of busy work out there at the ballpark at Panthersville. Whether the weather's been good or it has not been good, uh, but nonetheless, you've got the uh, Atlanta Challenge coming up here to open up the season. Another outstanding field uh, with Bradley, Connecticut, and uh, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota coming in. Great way to start the season. It is, and uh, we're excited about playing Bradley and Connecticut. We haven't played those teams in the past, so it's always good to see new blood, new life, new energy. Uh, the weather has been a mix. We've had some really big issues to deal with, uh, and then we've had some really good days. All in all, I feel like the team's ready. We've practiced. We're ready to go. Concerning Minnesota, we've played them now for the last three years in a row. We're pretty familiar with them. They've got an excellent team. Yeah. And uh, last year we went to Minnesota. It was a great trip. We split the series there, a two-game series. And then we took the team over to see the Minnesota Twins play at their ballpark and then flew to Texas and won two out of three against Texas State. So it was a great weekend, five-day trip, and uh, just looking forward to playing baseball, getting this 2018 team underway. Well, it's a great way to get the season started. Let's talk a little bit about the Atlanta Challenge because it involves not just Georgia State, but Georgia Tech and Kennesaw State. And so it becomes this round-robin college baseball event here to start the season. And Bradley, Connecticut, Minnesota will play all three teams, again, at a round-robin-like event. Well, I think one of the things, <clears throat> when uh, we put the thing together, one of the things that was of interest is we're going to be playing three very good teams yeah. uh, on different days. And it gives a, a, a team to come into Atlanta a chance to stay in the same hotel, but then play different teams today. So it's something that's interesting to the northern teams. And not just northern teams. We've had other teams uh, from the, the south as well play in the tournament. This year we have three northern teams. But um, everybody, it's been received really well. And I think I've even got uh, the 2019 and 2020 tournament already set, working on 2021 right now. Well, how, how has practice gone? I mean, uh, last year, uh, Georgia State baseball finished 22 and 33, not the way, obviously, that we would have, you know, liked to have finished up the season. Um, who did we lose? Who have we brought in? Who have you brought in? Uh, Hunter Gaddis will be your number one mm -hmm. uh, guy. He'll be your Friday night starter. Uh, a couple of new guys that were actually Jake Rogers, the new guy, Jordan Lee, um, who will pitch. He'll be your third in the, in the rotation uh, as a returning guy. But, you know, how, how does the team look this year as opposed to a year ago with what you lost and what you brought in? Well, we, we lost some good guys last year. And, and I think every year you lose good guys, Dave. I mean, yeah. uh, who, who can forget? Ryan Blanton in the Grand Slam he hit against Georgia Southern and right. he was a big game player. Had a huge game against Ole Miss in the victory at, at Oxford and, and so on. And you can't really replace players like that. And I appreciate all the seniors that was here last year, but you know. Moves on. Time moves on. Yeah. And the 2018 edition of this year's team features a lot of good seniors. I think we've got 11 seniors. I'm excited about that. This team has a lot of very veteran, experienced players, and a really big crop of freshmen, you guys, that's brought a lot of life and energy and shown they can play. On weekend one, Ryan Glass, a freshman, is going to be our starting DH on weekend one. I'm yep. excited to put him out there. He's played very well. Uh, he's handled everything uh, extremely well, and I'm excited to see what he can do in the game. And then you've got veterans like Jack Thompson, Will Kilgore, uh, Justin Jones, Luke Leonard, um, Nick Gatewood, and on and on. And <clears throat> Jordan Lee is one of our starters, and Brian White's one of our starters. And Jansen Acton is an experienced veteran. Tanner Thompson's experienced. We've got some experience. Uh, the key to this year is for us to stay healthy, and we're going to have to play well because we have a really good schedule. I was going to say, we'll talk about the schedule here in just mm -hmm. a moment. I did want to ask you about uh, Hunter Gaddis. 
Uh, he'll be, again, your Friday night starter, number one guy, 4-4, four and four, an ERA 3.72. You know, a lot of times you talk about athletes, the difference between going from high school to becoming a freshman, and then from that freshman season where they come in eyes wide open, because, again, it's all new, to the sophomore season where they kind of know the routine a little bit. He understands what your expectations are uh, from not only you but the coaching staff. With a guy like Hunter Gaddis with the success that he had last year and the upside, what do you see from a player like him, a pitcher like him, from a freshman year to the sophomore year? Well, Hunter had a very meteoric rise uh, f coming from high school into Division I baseball and then continuing to get better and better and worked his way uh, into the rotation, then to the number one spot on Friday night, carried that momentum into Team USA this summer. Yeah. And so I would like to see Hunter continue to go in this direction. However, everybody knows who Hunter Gaddis is now. And he's no surprise to anyone. And I think uh, in, in my meeting with him is that uh, he's going to need his competitiveness. He's going to need to be focused and on point because people are going to come in and say, this is, a big, this is a big game we'd like to take down right here. Yeah. Uh, we could really put a feather in our cap if we can do that. So I think he's going to have to really meet that challenge. He's certainly capable. He's a very competitive person. And um, so the sophomore year, a lot of times, is a greater challenge than a freshman year and it's strictly because you had success as a freshman and people know who you are and they're better and more prepared for you but that's how the the cream continues to rise and I think Hunter will have a good year I'm looking forward to seeing how he takes this challenge on and I'm confident in him all right lastly uh, again we talked about the Atlanta baseball challenge and the competitiveness of the schedule Auburn Georgia twice two-game homestand with Ole Miss uh, it's a competitive schedule I think every year we have a competitive schedule, but this certainly could be the, the best of all of it. Yeah. Uh, it is a great challenge to us, we realize that. But I think the reason players come to college is they, they uh, in the recruiting process, every player says, I want to play on the best team, I want to play the best teams, I want to challenge myself, and I want the best competition that I can get. And I think that being in the Sun Belt alone offers that. But then if you look at how competitive our non-conference schedule is, it's really good. I'm excited to play. We've got our n natural rivalries, Kennesaw and Mercer, which are always great games, home and home. Yep. We go to Furman. Yep. We've got Tech home and Georgia Tech home and home, Georgia home and home at Auburn, Ole Miss at our place. It's quite an accomplishment just to put that schedule together because most mid-majors have such a difficult time getting that. And in this particular year, it was perfect storm. You know, I was able to get some teams together and use some relationships through the years and things that we've done. And, uh, I, just, I think it's great for our fans, offers a very interesting situation, and we, I think we're putting a great product on the field, so it makes for a great season. All right, Coach, appreciate it. We'll look forward to seeing you out at uh, the ballpark at Panthersville. Thank you very much. All right, again, Georgia State Baseball opening up the Atlanta Baseball Challenge. That's going to be February 16, 17, 18, Bradley, Connecticut, and Minnesota out at Panthersville. Stay with us. We're going to talk a little bit of court volleyball with Sarah Renner when we come back here in the Georgia State Sports Update. Back here in the Georgia State Sports Update, we're talking all things Georgia State. We've talked basketball, we've talked baseball. Right now, let's talk a little bit of court volleyball. We're pleased to welcome into the studio Sarah Renner. She's from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and she's a member of the court volleyball team. Great to have you here with us on the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Busy time. You are not only the SAC representative or, or a member of SAC, but it's spring practice right now for court volleyball. Talk a little bit about uh, the season a year ago and, and getting ready for this year because I'm looking at my notes right. You played 27 matches last year and you had 16 starts. Yeah, so last year um, was super, totally a growth year, I would say. Um, we have such depth, so it was really fun to welcome in um, such a big class of freshmen. Um, I think we um, had a lot to um, learn as far as like growing as a team and just really like establishing what our team's about and our culture. Um, and then from that, we didn't graduate any seniors. So this next season that we're gearing up for um, is really kind of about like moving forward and then amping it up, you know? Right. So we're ready, um, we're getting ready, like you said, with um, our team practices that we just started this week. Um, they are, now we get to bring everything that we've worked on individually for the past month together and then um, just start working out like our systems and our whole team dynamic. So. 
Well, when you see those new freshmen come in and you're in your third year with uh, Georgia State Court Volleyball, does it bring back uh, all those memories of making that transition from high school and coming all the way from Iowa to Atlanta and, and becoming a collegiate volleyball player? Definitely does. Um, You've walked that walk before. Definitely, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I came from the Midwest. I came from Iowa. Um, and I know a lot of our freshmen were also from out of state. So I can definitely relate to that kind of transition. Um, Atlanta's a really fun place to go to school, so yep. I think that was more exciting than scary for me, and I think our freshmen probably feel the same way. Um, but yeah, definitely brings me back. <laughs> so that leads me into my next question for Sarah, because she's currently assisting with a program they call Dare to Care, and it helps student athletes handle the stress and the mental health aspect of being a student athlete, because there's a lot that goes with it that you don't see here on the TV show. They're at practice quite a bit, but then you gotta hold down the academic side of being a student athlete. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, SAC is really focusing on mental health awareness now because um, the Sun Belt put forward that that's a focus. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, yeah, as student athletes, we're constantly trying to jump higher and lift more and be stronger and hit harder. But sometimes we kind of tend to glaze over or try to push it under the rug, like your, your mental health side of it, which is just as important. Um, so the mental wellness initiative that we're calling Dare to Care um, kind of focuses on being able to start that dialogue and like help that conversation happen if it needs to happen. So um, it's just encouraging people to step forward and say, hey, like, I'm not clinically diagnosed with anything, but I think I need some help with this. And right. it would just improve um, kind of like that student athlete experience. Better so. to talk about it early than to wait and let, if it's going to, let it build up, let the pressure build up. It's better Definitely. not to go that route, but to, to kind of meet it head on early. Right, yeah, and we really want to just, um, yeah, just make that a focus or at least a conversation that people are willing to have. And you said this is a conference-wide yeah. initiative from the Sunbelt Conference. Mm -hmm. You got to go to Texas. I and, did. And meet with other, <laughs> we'll call them SAC student athletes Definitely, who are yeah. facing and dealing with the same thing that we, our athletes deal with here at Georgia State. How was that experience? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was awesome. So they hosted it at um, UT Arlington. So I got to go to their campus for about two days. And um, I met with um, leaders from each different SAC. Um, there's one for, per school, and we kind of just talked about legislation, and then we talked a lot about this mental health, health awareness. Um, bounced ideas off of each other, got some more ideas of like ways we can make it better, and um, just kind of like what we're doing as a group. Um, we taped a public or public service announcement yeah. thing, yes, I and um, yeah, it was really awesome. I feel like um, I felt informed, and now I'm ready to bring it back. Well, the Student Athlete Advisory Council, or committee, is made up of student athletes from all the different sports. You're the, one of the representatives from uh, court volleyball. But what other things does the SAC do during the course of the year to uh, make their presence known within athletics and really across campus? Mm -hmm. Our focus um, a lot is community service. So we really pride ourselves in um, how active we get in the community. And um, a lot of that has to do with focusing on connecting with youth around Atlanta. Um, we do a lot with giving back to um, local shelters and just different efforts like that. Um, and also we do different programming for um, like a resume workshop or mock interviews, things like that to get um, athletes ready for the future. Yeah, so. for their career. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. great having you here on the show and best of luck and uh, we look forward to watching you out on the court this year over at the sports arena. Thank you. All right, I want to thank Sarah Renner from the court volleyball team joining us here for a few minutes on the Georgia State Sports Update. I want to thank our guests today in studio, Ron Hunter, as well as Sarah Renner and Georgia State baseball coach Greg Frady. Another action-packed show. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Cohen for the entire crew. This has been the Georgia State Sports Update.